Poems by Ralph Waldo Emerson Narrated by Ara Reed. Goodbye Goodbye, proud world, I'm going home. Thou art not my friend, and I'm not thine. Long through thy weary crowds I roam, a river arc on the ocean brine. Long I've been tossed like the driven foam, but now, proud world, I'm going home. Goodbye to Flattery's fawning face, to grandeur with his wise grimace, to upstart wealth's averted eye, to supple office low and high, to crowded horns, to court and street, to frozen hearts and hasting feet, to those who go and those who come, goodbye, proud world, I'm going home. I'm going to my own hearthstone, bosomed in yon green hills alone, secret nook in a pleasant land, whose groves the frolic fairies planned, where arches green the livelong day, echo the blackbirds round delay, and vulgar feet have never trod a spot that is sacred to thought and God. Oh, when I'm safe in my sylvan home, I tread on the pride of Greece and Rome. And when I'm stretched beneath the pines, where the evening star so holy shines, I laugh at the lore and the pride of man, at the sophist schools and the learned clan. For what are they all in their high conceit, when man in the bush with God may meet? Each and all. Little things in the field, yon red cloaked clown, of thee from the hilltop looking down, the heifer that lows in the upland farm, far heard lows not thine ear to charm. The sexton tolling his bell at noon deems not that great Napoleon stops his horse and lists with delight, while his fires sweep round yon alpine height. No knowest thou what argument thy life to thy neighbour's greed has lent. All are needed by each one, nothing is fair or good alone. I thought the sparrow's note from heaven, singing at dawn on the older bough, I brought him home in his nest at even. He sings the song, but it chose not now, for I did not bring home the river and sky. He sang to my ear, they sang to my eye. The delicate shells lay on the shore, the bubbles of the latest wave, Fresh pearls to their enamel gave, and the bellowing of the savage sea greeted their safe escape to me. I wiped away the weeds and foam, I fetched my seaborne treasures home, but the poor, unsightly, noisome things had left the beauty on the shore, with the sun and the sand and the wild uproar. The lover watched his graceful maid, as amid the virgin train she strayed, nor knew her beauty's best attire was woven still by the snow-white choir. At last she came to his hermitage, like the bird from the woodlands to the cage. The gay enchantment was undone, a gentle wife, but fairy none. Then I said, I covet truth. Beauty is unripe childhood's cheat. I leave it behind with the games of you. As I spoke, beneath my feet, the crown pine curled its pretty wreath. Running over the club moss burrs, I inhaled the violet's breath. Around me stood the oaks and firs, pine cones and acorns lay on the ground. Over me soared the eternal sky, full of light and of deity. Again I saw, again I heard, the rolling river, the morning bird. Beauty through my senses stole, I yielded myself to the perfect whole. The Problem I like a church, I like a cow, I love a prophet of the soul, and on my heart monastic aisles fall like sweet strains or pincer smiles, yet not for all his faith can see would I that cowlet churchman be. Why should the vest on him allure, which I could not on me endure? Not from a vain or shallow thought, his awful Jove young Phidias brought. Never from lips of cunning fell the thrilling Delphic oracle. Out from the heart of nature rolled, the burdens of the Bible owned, 
The litanies of nations came, like the volcano's tongue of flame, up from the burning core below, the cant girls of love and woe. The hand that rounded Peter's dome, and groined the eyes of Christian Rome, wrought in a sad sincerity. Himself from God he could not free, he builded better than he knew, the conscious stone to beauty grew. He builded better than he knew, the conscious stone to beauty grew. Knowest thou what wove yon woodbird's nest of leaves and feathers from her breast? Or how the fish outbuilt her shell, painting with morn each annual cell? Or how the sacred pine tree adds to her own leaves new myriads? Such and so grew these holy pines, whilst love and terror laid the tines. Earth proudly wears the Parthenon as the best gem upon her own, and morning opes with haste her lids to gaze upon the pyramids. Over England's abbeys bends the sky, as on its friends with kindred eye. For out of thought's interior sphere these wonders rose to upper air, and nature gladly gave them place, adopted them into her race, and granted them an equal date with Andes and with Ararat. These temples grew as grows the grass, art might to be, but not surpass. The passive master lent his hand to the vast soul that over him planned, and the same power that reared the shrine bestrode the tribes that knelt within. Ever the fiery Pentecost girds with one flame the countless host, trances the heart through chanting choir, and through the priest the mind inspires. The word unto the prophet spoken was writ on tables, yet unbroken. The word by seers of sibyls told in groves of ache or veins of gold. Still floats upon the morning wind, still whispers to the willing mind. One accent of the holy coast the heedless world hath never lost. I know what say the father's wise, the book itself before me lies. Old Chrysostom, best Augustine, and he who blent both in his line. The younger golden lips are mine's, Taylor, the Shakespeare of divines. His words are music in my ear, I see his scowled portrait, dear. And yet, for all his faith could see, I would not the good bishop be. To Rhea Thee, dear friend, a brother soothes, not with flatteries, but truths, which tarnish not, but purify, to light which dims the morning's eye. I have come from the spring woods, from the fragrant solitudes. Listen what the poplar tree and murmuring waters counseled me. If with love thy heart has burned, if thy love is unreturned, Hide thy grief within thy breast, though it tear thee unexpressed. For when love has once departed from the eyes of the false-hearted, and one by one has torn off quite the bandages of purple light, though thou wert the loveliest form the soul had ever dressed, thou shalt seem in each reply a vixen to his altered eye. Thy soft bleeding seemed too bold, the praying lute would seem to scorn. Though thou kept the straightest road, yet thou errest far and broad. But thou shalt do as do the gods in their cloudless periods, for of this lore be thou sure. Though thou forget the gods secure, forget never their command, but make the statute of this land. As they lead, so follow all, ever have done, ever shall. Warning to the blind and deaf, tears written on the iron leaf, who drinks of Cupid's nectar cup, loveth downward and not up. He who loves of gods or men shall not by the same be loved again. His sweetheart's idolatry falls in turn a new degree. When a god is once beguiled by beauty of a mortal child and by her radiant youth delighted, he is not fooled but warily knoweth his love shall never be requited and thus the wise immortal doeth it is his study and delight to bless that creature day and night, from all evils to defend her, in her lap to pour all splendour, to ransack earth for riches rare, and fetch her stars to deck her hair. 
He mixes music with her thoughts and saddens her with heavenly doubts. All grace, all good, his great heart knows, profuse in love, the king bestows. Seeing hearken, earth, sea, air, this monument of my despair, build I to the all good, all fair. Not for a private good, but I from my beatitude. Albert scorned, as none was scorned, adorn her, as was none adorned. I make this maiden an ensample to nature, through her kingdom's ample, whereby to model newer races, statelier forms, and fairer faces, to carry man to new degrees of power and of comeliness. These presents be the hostages which I pawn for my release. See to thyself, O universe, thou art better and not worse, and the God, having given all, is freed for ever from his throne. The Visit Askest how long thou shalt stay, devastator of the day, know each substance and relation, thorough nature's operation. Hath its unit, bound in meter, and every new compound is some product and repeater. Product of the earlier found, but the unit of the visit, the encounter of the wise. See, what other meter is it than the meeting of the eyes? Nature poureth into nature through the channels of that feature. Riding on the ray of sight, fleeter far than whirlwinds go, or for service or delight. Hearts to hearts the meaning show, some their long experience and import intelligence. Single look has drained the breast, single moment years confessed. The duration of a glance is the term of convenience, and though thy read be church or state, frugal multiples of that. Speeding Saturn cannot haunt, linger thou shalt true the font. If love his moment overstay, he truth swift repulsions play. Uriel It fell in the ancient periods which the brooding soul surveys, or ever the wild time coined itself into calendar months and days. This was a lapse of Uriel which in paradise befell. Once among the plates walking, Said overheard the young gods talking, And the treason, too long pent, To his ears was evident. The young deities discussed Laws of form and meter just. Orb, quintessence, and sunbeams, What subsisteth and what seems. One with low tones that decide, And doubt and reverend use defied. With a look that sawed the sphere and stirred the devils everywhere, gave his sentiment divine against the being of a line. Line in nature is not found, unit and universe are round. In being produced, all rays return, evil will bless and ice will burn. As Uru spoke with piercing eye, a shudder ran around the sky. The stone old war gods shook their heads, the seraphs frowned from myrtle beds. Seemed to the holy festival the rash word boded ill to all. The balance beam of fate was bent, the bounds of good and ill were rent. Strong heeds could not keep his own, but all slid to confusion. A sad self-knowledge withering fell on the beauty of Uriel. In heaven, once eminent, the god withdrew that hour into his cloud. With a doom to long gyration in the sea of generation, or by knowledge grown too bright to hit the nerve of feebler sight. Straightway a forgetting wind stole over the celestial kind, and the lips the secret kept, if in ashes the fire seed slept. But now and then truth speaking things shamed the angels' failing wings, and shrilling from the solar course, or from fruit of chemic force procession of a soul in matter, or the speeding change of water, or out of the good of evil born, came Uru's voice of cherubs gone. And a blush tinged the upper sky, and the gods shook, they knew not why.
the world soul. Thanks to the morning light, thanks to the foaming sea, to the uplands of New Hampshire, to the greenhead forestry. Thanks to each man of courage, to the maids of holy mind, to the boy with his games undaunted, who never looks behind. Cities of proud hotels, houses of rich and great, voice nestles in your chambers beneath your roofs of slate. It cannot conquer folly, time and space conquering steam, and the light outspeeding telegraph with nothing on its beam. The politics are base, the letters do not cheer, and tis far in the deeps of history the voice that speaketh clear. Trade and the streets ensnare us, our bodies are weak and born, we plot and corrupt each other, and we despoil the unborn. Yet there in the parlour sits some figure of noble guise, our angel in a stranger's form, or woman's pleading eyes, or only a flashing sunbeam in at the window pane, or music pours on mortals its beautiful disdain. The inevitable morning finds them who in cellars be, and be sure the all loving nature will smile in a factory. Yon ridge of purple landscape, yon sky between the walls, hold all the hidden wonders and scanty intervals. Alas, the sprite that haunts us deceives our rash desire. It whispers of the glorious gods and leaves us in the mire. We cannot learn the cipher that's writ upon our cell, stars taunt us by a mystery which we could never spell. If but one hero knew it, the world would blush and flame. The sage, till he hid the secret, would hang his head for shame. Our brothers have not read it, not one has found the key, and henceforth we are comforted, we are but such as they. Still, still the secret presses, the nearing clouds drawn down, the crimson morning flames into the fopperies of the town. Within, without the idle earth, stars weave eternal rings. The sun himself shines heartily and shares the joy he brings. And what if trade so cities like shells along the shore and thatch with towns the prairie broad with railways eyed over? They are but sailing foam bells along thoughts causing stream and take their shape and sun colour from him that sends the dream. For destiny never swerves, nor aims to mend the helm. He shoots his thought by hidden nerves throughout the solid realm. The patient demon sits with roses and a shroud. He has his way and deals his gifts, but ours is not allowed. He is no churl, no trifler, and his viceroy is none. Love without weakness of genius, sire and son, and his will is not thwarted. The seeds of land and sea are the atoms of his body bright, and his behest obey. He serveth the servant, the brave he loves amain. He kills the cripple and the sick, and straight begins again. For gods delight in gods, and thrust the weak aside. To him who scorns their charities, their arms fly open wide. When the old world is sterile, and the ages are effete, he will, from wrecks and sediment, the fairer world complete. He forbids to despair, his cheeks mantle with mirth, and the unimagined good of men is yearning at the birth. Spring still makes spring in the mind when sixty years are toned, love wakes anew this throbbing heart, and we are never old. Over the winter glaciers I see the summer glow, and through the wild-piled snowdrift, the warm rosebuds below.